Previously on the bill. Okay. Uh, June Atkin, right? I should go. Don't you dare walk away. I gave Gabriel up for adoption. I've moved on. I've closed the book now. But he's back in your life now. Life without you is no life at all. Hey guys, stand back here. Yeah? Out of the way, please. Out Watch out, way. mate. Stand back, please. What's your name, mate? Dan. Okay, Dan, don't move. Ambulance on its way, yeah? You can tell me what happened. This lad, the white kid, ran off that way. Did you know him? Dan. Sort of. I've dealt with some assaults carried out by kids around here the other week that are pretty similar. What, the gay bashings? Dan didn't say anything about being gay. Tenor says I'm right. Bet your gay are working. Very good. I can pick him straight away. Don't worry, I know you're straight, judging by the smile on Honey's face. So it's true then. Haven't you got criminals to catch or something? Get in. I met the lad who attacked me last night in a club. What kind of club? What's that got to do with it? Well, was it a rave? Was it a disco? Might he have been taking drugs? It was a gay club, yeah. all right? Did he tell you his name? No. I thought he was coming on to me. He seemed a bit shy. I was enjoying the attention, so I went along with it. And where did it lead? Nowhere. He legged it. He must have lost his nerve. It happens with these kids. When he ran off, where did he go? Out of the club. I went after him to tell him it was okay. And I guess I didn't want to admit defeat. I caught up with him, but he wasn't interested. He ran off into the night. And you saw him again this morning? Yeah, I live round the corner from the estate. I was walking past and there he was with his mates. I wanted to know what had happened the night before, so I went over. Big mistake. Kid looked like he'd seen a ghost. When I talked to him, his mates started shouting abuse. Queer, poof, all the usual. And suddenly the kid went mad. Punching, kicking, yelling. I thought he was going to kill me. Did the others join in? No, they ran off. You didn't say anything that might have provoked this attack? All I did was ask what had happened the night before. Thanks, Mr. Wilcox. We'll need you to come in to look at some photos of possible suspects when you're up to it. Sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. One last thing. What was the club called? Um, I'm not sure of the name. Some place on Rudkin Road. The Red Shoes, yeah? You know it? Yeah. Wicked soul now on Thursdays. So you reckon it's a queer bashing? Yes, Sarge. And how's that different from any other kind of bashing? Well, Sarge, it's a hate crime motivated yes. by... Yes, OK, I know. I'm just not sure you're right, that's all. I mean, if this lad is an anti-gay vigilante, what's he doing in a gay club? Good place to find a target. Well, what about the other witnesses? What have they said? PC Tate's rung them. They're all prepared to make statements. Good. In the meantime, uh, get to the club. See if they've got any CCTV. Sarge. Hate crime. Have you ever heard of a hate crime? You ever heard of a love crime? Sorry, Sarge. Just get on with it. I bet he's a big softy underneath all that. I don't even reckon he's got an underneath. Lance. Congratulations. Sir. You're the new face of Sunhill. Sir. There's a journalist coming in from one of the national newspapers. He's doing a day in the life sort of thing. He wants to interview someone I see as a model young officer. And? And I'm giving him you. Yeah, yeah, I remember the kid. Um, quite tall, sweaty, wearing a nasty green top and a silly little baseball cap. You had a good look at him? Quiet night, was it? No. A 
tend to notice people who are flirting with my boyfriend. Dan Wilcox? Yeah. What's going on? Are you aware that Dan was assaulted this morning? He what? Is, is he okay? What happened? He's pretty knocked around, but he'll live. Do you have any CCTV in the club? Yeah, yeah, in the um, lobby and over the door. Uh, Andy, can you get the tape from last night? I feel awful. It should never have happened. This looks like it was a homophobic attack. I thought you'd arrested whoever was doing those. No one's been charged. Maybe this time they will be. Right, let's see if this Wilcox is telling the truth. There. I'm sure he looks familiar. Good. Get a clear image and get some printed off, all right? Sarge. Sheila? Sarge. I heard there's been another homophobic attack. Yeah, I'm just looking at the suspect now. I know that lad from somewhere. Oh, no. No! That's Connor, isn't it? That's your son. Is this something to do with that Bobby Abinson thug? Doesn't look like it. My son wouldn't do that. There must be some other explanation. And what about the false alibi he provided for Bobby Abinson? Is there some other explanation for that too? What's the charge? Probably GBH. Lance. Please don't ask me to do anything that I can't do. Okay. But is there any way you could keep it quiet? I'll try. So how did you ID this Connor? An informant. No one in the super wants to make you out a new poster, boy. Oh, does everyone know about that already? Yeah. There's someone out front asking for you about a witness statement. Uh, they'll have to wait to go nick this suspect. Uh, I could take a statement for you, Cameron, if you're busy. Thanks, Sheila. You're a star. So, what do you got for me? Right. A Brenda Kelman. She was a prostitute on Clyde's side. She moved down south about ten years ago. She was raped in 1989 after meeting with a group of clients in a hotel room. And you think this might be our man? Well, it's the same MO. I mean, a bit more primitive, but all the hallmarks are there. Definite traits of a retaliation rape, and there are links to the Navy. Military training, just like our guy. I think it's one of our suspect's earliest attacks, if not his first. This could be a big breakthrough for us, if I'm right. Yeah, let's not jump to any wild conclusions. We need to establish if it's the same man first. I take it there was no arrest. There wasn't even a proper investigation. She was a prostitute crying rape. It's a noose moving area, I'm afraid. Who were you with in the Camberton Hotel? Navy boys from the base up there, Strath, Nordham. How many were there? Six. Was one of them the man who raped you? Maybe. There was one guy, wee fella. Couldn't get himself going. Know what I mean? Other guys were all having a laugh, but he didn't seem to think it was funny. Seems to think it's my fault. Well, his mates weren't having any trouble, you know. So that's it. He loses her egg party over. And the rape? It happened after that? Just up the way. I was walking home. Came from behind out of nowhere. Grabs me hair and he's all ripping at my clothes and... Rough, you know. Did he have a knife? No need. Using his fists. Keep saying something about me deserving it. You know, I've had rough clients in my time, but this guy's mental. So, so he raped me. <clears throat> Did you see his face? It was dark. But I remember thinking, is that him from the hotel? <laughs> Something. Voice, maybe. What was his accent? Southern like us. 
The um, men in the hotel room, what were their names? Mm, it's just Greg. He was a regular. He booked her. Do you think it was him? <coughs> nah. Had I known? Okay. What was Greg's surname? <laughs> Sweetheart, in my game, we don't do surnames, just Greg. I think the press dragged him down, though. Was this journalist writing about your case? Some girl from the local rag, thinking she was saving the world. <laughs> Pathetic. Did he talk to her? What do you think? Did she publish his name? Yeah, I bet that went down well at home, eh? Gabriel, I need you to go through all these press cuttings. I'm looking for an interview with Brenda Kelman, OK? Sarge. Sarge, I'm not busy if you want any help in here. Well, thank you, Kerry, but uh, I'm, I'm all staffed up right now. Gabriel, I'll do this for you if you want. No, you're right. I'll deal with it in a bit, OK? Please, Sarge, I really want to help. Look, I don't mind doing the donkey work. I've got a very good team here, Kerry. I'm a lot better informed on this investigation than some of the officers. Anyone in particular? I was so officer to two of the victims, Khadija and Nina. I know what happened and I know how this guy operates. Did you speak to Sergeant Smith? No, I thought... She can take over for me if you like, Sarge. Is that OK with you? Oh, absolutely. She's right. She's far more qualified for this than I am. I mean, rape's your speciality, isn't it, Kerry? Oh, and thanks for coming by the other week. I had a laugh. You're a dark horse. Yeah. What can I do? Uh, well, Gabriel's going to go through some press cuttings. Oh, don't worry, Sarge, I'm on it. Well, make sure you are. I'm looking for a Greg someone. I need his full name. Right, well, there's case files going back 15 years over here. I know where you are, Connor. I've got this one, Cam. You in SO19, right, Sarge? Yeah, why? Why'd you leave? I mean, it must be pretty dull here by comparison. You think so? Well, maybe you need to spend a bit more time out on the streets and a bit less time sitting at home watching the telly. I'm just saying. Uh, Cameron, I want you to go back down to the coal lane estate. Now, I know you made an arrest for that assault, but word gets about and a high profile can't hurt. And I want you to take Billy the kid here. Sarge, let's go, cowboy. Yep, B-I-A. Cameron, I've got that witness statement for you. Ah, uh, thanks. Can you give it to Lance? Please, I don't want to see my mum. You're all right. Sheila, please. Connor, are you okay? Connor, please. Sheila, this ain't the time. Look, he doesn't hang around with that crowd anymore. He told me. Isn't that right? Back off, Sheila, yeah. You're going to make it worse for him. Excuse me. Come on. I don't know the place. I've never been there. That's not what Dan Wilcox says. Hey? For the tape, Diaz Hunter has shown the suspect a printout from the CCTV camera inside the Red Shoes nightclub. Nice act. Do you know what kind of club the Red Shoes is, Connor? No. What's that got to do with anything? Now, seeing as you look so good on camera, we were just wondering if we could take a few more photos. You know, show them to some of our witnesses. That OK with you? Mr. Boss? No, all the cars are out and Smithy's asked me to go and get a witness statement for Lance. Come on, I'll give you a lift as long as it's not too far. Oh, thanks, Jim. Have you found that article yet, Andrea? No, Sarge. I went through the files three times, but it's not there. Right. You might not need it, though, Sarge. Hmm? What's this? Reservations list for the Cam Burton Hotel the night of the rape. How did you get this? Well, they told me they didn't keep them. Well, their accountants still had them in their archive files. I just had to give them a bit of local girl chat. 
It's amazing what a basic knowledge of the Greenock one-way system will get you. Room 206. Greg Collishaw. June? Oh, she's much better. She'll be out soon. You OK? Yeah, sorry, Jim. This is just where the accident happened. There were them two kids drowned. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. will be fine in a minute. Have you seen anyone about counselling? No. Me and Cameron are helping each other through it. I see. Are you sure that's the right thing to be doing? I don't know. Isn't it? Only you and Cameron can answer that. 158454, location please. Just on Riverside Street at the moment, Sarge. Right, there's been a burglary at 5959 Keeley Lane. Can you deal, please? Inform that Mrs. Allsop, the occupier. We'll see you, Sarge. Keely Lane. Sorry, Jim. <sighs> OK. This is Yep, Greg Collishaw. Yeah, I'll hold. Hey, you were keen. Sorry? To replace Gabriel. Something going on between you two? Bit of one-upmanship? No, not at all. I just thought I could help. OK, Brenda was attacked from behind. He was left-handed, he was fast, he was violent. Um, the accent, that matches. And the, the stuff he said to her about her deserving it? We've heard that before. I'm not convinced. There was no knife, he was rough, he was careless. It's not his style at all. I think Brenda Kelman was his first victim. That's why it was rough. Maybe. Hugh, if we rule this out, we could be throwing away a vital piece of evidence. Facts, Samantha. Facts, facts, facts. We know he's from the southeast. We know it from his accent. We know it from this cluster. We know he's familiar with the area. He mainly attacks late at night, after the tube's closed. He's travelling to the scenes either by car or he's walking, or he lives here. Now, it's probably the latter, because he goes for locations that only a local would know. So we know that he's someone from this area. What about the peat in the footprint? That's Scottish. Fact. Yeah, we've got... Scottish paint, we've got rabbit DNA here, we've got bird DNA here, we've got two West Country rapes. And that suggests that he's commuting from his home base here. And something is taking him around the country. Some kind of country pursuit. Hunting? Yeah, hunting, poaching. Maybe he just likes country walks. Maybe he's got family in Scotland, or friends, or it's a business trip. Look, what happened to Brenda was terrible. I'm just not convinced there's the same man. OK. But I don't want to rule it out yet. Fine. Rule it out later. When you accept that I'm right. Sarge? Yeah? Greg Collishaw, the man who booked a room in Clyde. Mm -hmm. He works in a hotel in Paddington and he's got previous for theft. Excellent. Right, Mrs Allsop, what seems to be the problem? This lad came in. Well, he said he wanted his cards read, but as soon as he had a chance, he grabbed it and ran. Grabbed what? Me crystal ball! Do you know how much they cost? 200 quid. Didn't you see him coming? No. But funnily enough, I had a premonition you were going to say that. Right, I'll get some details. Can you tell me what he looked like? What's the matter, love? Nothing. Oh, something's wrong. Terribly wrong. I'm fine. No, someone's trying to reach you. Who? I can hear children. Come along. Come on, let's do this properly. Greg Collishaw. DS Nixon, Sunhill. I've got orders on here. We won't be long. What's this about? A woman called Brenda Kelman. Never heard of her. Well, she's heard of you. Says you were a regular client when you were at Strath Nordham Naval Base. Oh, yeah? Well, dentist or something, is she? This isn't a joke, Greg. Brenda Kelman was raped after she'd been with you and a group of men. Yeah, I remember. It wasn't me, OK? 
We are not in the frame. So you can relax and start talking. What do you want to know? The hotel room was booked in your name. Who else was there? What, 15 years later? Well, we know there were probably six of you. Were there? I wouldn't remember. I did it all the time. Maybe you will recall this particular evening, because it ended early. Because one of your pals couldn't perform. Oh, yeah. Him. What's his name? No idea. Sorry. Sorry, officer. Love to help. Better get back. My boss is worse than anything the Navy threw at us. Does he know about Brogan House Hotel? Why would he be interested in that? Well, I'd want to know if I ran a very nice establishment like this, if a member of my staff had done time for stealing wage packets. Oh, come on. It took me years to get this job. Then keep it. Call me when you've got the names. Have you lost a child, love? Well, no. Kind of. A little girl. She's in the sun. She's happy. And what about her brother? Yes. Yes, he's there too. Yeah, they want you to know they're fine. They're all right. They're all right. You two gonna be here all day? So there was an assault around here earlier, yeah? Yeah, a gay guy got beaten up. Sounds like someone wanted to prove what a man he is. A lot of trouble in this state, is there? Uh, the coal lane? Yeah, it's got its problems, I suppose. Drugs, right? Ah, uh, no more than anywhere else. Try to answer the people that live here. What was that? I'll check it out. Steve, steady on, mate. Steve! Steve! Cameron! Cameron! Yeah, all right, I'm coming. In here. Yeah, all right, keep your hair on. I think he's been shot. Well, maybe she did. She probably read about the children in the paper and remembered your name. Or maybe she really does have some sixth sense. Oi! Come on, Jim! It's all right. I'm surprised you didn't see me coming. Oh, you are going to keep saying that until you get a laugh, aren't you? Come on, you. Hello, Andrew. Hey. Friend of yours? Yeah. Well, sort of through a friend of a friend, you know. All right, well, uh, apparently he's a journalist, so watch what you say. Yeah, you never know where it's going to end up. Oh, cheers for that. Oh, so you know PC Dunbar? PC Dunbar. Yeah, I know. Oh, where from? She's, um... Sir, you were looking for me? Ah, Lance, yes. I'd like you to meet Logan Lockwood. He's doing the profile, please. This is PC Bell. Future of the Met, apparently. I wouldn't say that. I'd like to think so. Although, obviously, they won't all be young, gifted, black, Christian and gay. Excuse me. Logan Lockwood. Logan, what is going on? I'm at Sunhill Police Station researching a feature. Where are you? Logan, I need to talk to you right now. Sorry, I'm going to be tied up for a while. I'm sure I'll see you around then. Logan, no.
But being a black police officer must be difficult, even today. Being black's difficult. Being a police officer isn't. Do your friends see it that way? If they didn't, they wouldn't be my friends. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of what I am. I'm proud of it. So you're basically a typical young recruit? No one thinks of themselves as typical, do they? We're all different. In my case, it's because of my skin colour. And your sexuality? OK, look, I know the sleeper said I'm out, but it's not quite that simple. Never is, is it? Look, I'd rather you didn't mention it in the article. Why? Is it not true? Yes, it's true, but... Ah, uh, so you're scared of people knowing? Your colleagues, right? No, I'm cool with it. Some of them know and they haven't got a problem with it, but... My family don't, and I'd rather my mother didn't find out by reading it in the national newspaper. I'm not ashamed of what I am. I'm proud of it. Maybe it's time you told her. Andrea. You heard about the murder on the coal lane? Yeah, I heard Smithy telling someone. Who is it? Remember Lee Sanford? You're kidding. You sure did. I knew I was right about him. It proves that it was more than just a bit of theft. This is gang stuff. So what? He deserves to be killed? You play with fire, you get your fingers burnt. Excuse me. Uh, the super asked me to look after Mr Lockwood. Cheers, Andrew. Don't do this to me. Superintendent. What a lot of bright young police officers you have at this station. I'm glad you think so. Excuse me, Andrew. Gabriel. I've just been down at the Coal Lane Estate. You've heard about this murder? Uh, yes, sir. You two were involved with this kid, Lee Sanford, recently. Isn't that correct? Sir, myself and PC Dunbar dealt with him and Duke Collins a few weeks ago about a theft at an old lady's house. But he wasn't charged. OK, I might all want to talk to you both at some point. And stay away from our journalist friend. I don't want him scooping this before we're ready. Sir. Mr Lockwood, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be tied up with police business for a while. I'll get someone to shoot. Ah, Warren. Show Mr Lockwood the delights of CSU. So you finished your little celebrity profile then? Sarge. Now oh, it's good to have you back. Now, Dan Wilcox has ID Connor for the assault, and his partner's picked him out from the club. So it looks like he's going to be learning some manners at Her Majesty's pleasure, doesn't it? He's committed seven rapes. They've arrested no one. I didn't know it was that many. Hmm. It's unbelievable. I've told the management I'm not doing foot patrols on my own anymore. So should you. I will. Word. What are you doing? That guy's a journalist. Good. If the DI hears you've been mouthing off to a journal, he'll throw the book at you. Let him. What's going on? Why haven't you released Connor yet? I'm sorry, Sheila, but you know I can't discuss... No, I need to know. You can speak to his brief. Better still, ask Connor. See if the custody officer will allow a visit. Oh. I was wondering when you'd appear. Didn't think it'd be an air. So what the hell are you doing here? I feature on your new gaff. Oh, it's lively, isn't it? I should have been warned that you were coming. You nearly blew my cover. Don't be ridiculous, Andrea. I knew you were here. You knew? So what's with all the hello, Andrea, then? Well, you're only wanted to give you a bit of a scare. This is Bruce's idea of a joke. <laughs> Listen, Andrea, I've been here half a day and I've got better stories than you. And I walked through the front door and told them I was a journalist. Bruce is starting to wonder what the point is of having you here. I can't write what I'm getting until he pulls me out of here. He knows that. So feed it back. We know how to handle it without blowing your cover. You better come up with some juice, Andrea, because Bruce thinks you're protecting your new friends. And that sort of thing doesn't make headlines. Or bylines. It's up to you. Mind if I join you? Yes. Don't think I'm scared of you, Kerry, because I'm not. You're like a fly buzzing around me, waiting to be swatted away. Oh, well, we all know what flies are attracted to. Now, don't be smart. I might drop around again one night. 
remind you what you saw in me in the first place. I didn't even think about it. Or what? Leave a window open for me. Cameron, what you sneaking up on people for? I know. You know what? Price of fish? Kerry. You did it, didn't you? Oh, yeah. She's finally come clean, has she, about her night of passion? I know you raped her. What? You've suddenly decided that you believe her now, have you? Get real, Cameron. She loves crying rape, that one. Must turn her on or something. <laughs> okay, Skippy. What if I did rape her? What would you do about it, eh? You think anyone's going to believe you after last time? We'll see. No, we won't. We won't see anything. You're not man enough. You OK? What's happening? Gabriel more or less just admitted to me that he raped you, and I can see now he's been paying us both for fools. What's going on? Are you okay? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, good, so long as you're okay. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Uh, tonight, uh, listen, why, why don't I cook tonight? Yeah, that would be nice. Gabriel, you going somewhere? Sarge, I was going to the doctor's. Without squaring it with your sergeant? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I think I might have picked up a stomach bug. Right. There and back as soon as you can. Sarge. Sarge, where's he going? The doctor's. Kerry. We're needed in the incident room. Greg Coley shall come up with some suspect names. OK, we've got three witnesses to the assault who have positively ID'd Connor Murphy. Plus, there's Dan, Mike and the CCTV. And if we're lucky, there'll be some of his blood on Dan's clothing. Is his brief still in? Yeah, I think so. So you want to do another interview? Oh, yeah. A bit more pressure from us and we might have him. What do you reckon? OK, but maybe we shouldn't go in too hard, Sarge, eh? Not at first, yeah? What are you talking, go touchy-feely? I think it's confused. He's not telling us the whole truth about why he was in that club. It's so? So, if we allow him to unburden himself, a sympathetic approach might work. What's going on here, Lance? I'm not stupid, OK? I know which team you go out the back for, so... What are you doing sticking up for a silly little queer bashing like him for? Come spit it out. Is Sheila Murphy's son? You pulling my leg? What, the same Sheila Murphy that took one of the witness statements? Which is now a compromised piece of evidence? Yes, Sarge. I don't believe this. Right, get him into an interview room, and you best hope he rolls over. OK, these names are the best we can get for the men that were in the hotel room before Brenda Kelman was raped. Now, our informant tells us that little Al could be our main suspect. Now, Al, that could be Alan, Alistair, Alex... Andy, even, I mean, anything that begins with A. As you can see, the information is quite vague. But they're all in the Navy and all stationed at Strathnorden. Yeah, in 1989. So that narrows it down quite a bit, actually. Get on to Strathnorden and the MOD police. We'll need any names they have that could possibly match up with any of these. And stay in their bag. This is high priority. If the Navy put it on one side, we won't hear anything for a month. Yeah, we need that list today, OK? Sarge? OK, the rest of you, try and link any of these names with any outstanding statements, all right? This could be our strongest lead so far. Off you go. Kerry, run the same names for the naval bases in Portsmouth and Plymouth, would you? Yeah, What was that about the West Country rapes? If, if you're right about this Scottish case, then there's a possible link with the naval bases. 
The dates are much later, but it's worth checking out. Little Al. It's humiliating, isn't it, a nickname like that? It depends. Could be affectionate. Little Hugh. How does that feel? It's humiliating, isn't it? You see, I think that's the key to our man. Humiliation. Brenda laughed at him, humiliating him in front of his peers. He felt emasculated, so he lashed out, proves he's a man. Thank you, Sigmund Freud. Look, forget about the why. Explaining his behaviour isn't going to catch him. Predicting it is. Oh, I get it. Your way or not at all, is that it? You haven't changed, have you? No, I haven't. I do it my way, or do it without me. Fine. My way it is. Sarge. Cat's on the phone, there's been another rape. She's an Norwegian girl, Solveig Christiansen. She's over here visiting her father. It happened just over an hour ago. She was walking down the high street. He forced her down an alleyway, but no witnesses. Does it sound like our man? It's hard to say as yet. Samantha's heading down to the hospital to talk to the victim now. She'll be able to tell us more. Of course. Keep me informed. Lance. Sir. In here. I just heard from D.S. Hunter that you arrested P.C. Murphy's son this morning. That's right. Were you planning to keep it quiet? Sorry, sir. Come on, Lance. Did you tell Sheila that you'd keep his identity to yourself? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. It was a tough call, but you made the wrong decision. If something like this happens again, you come to me, all right? I said all right. No. Is there a problem, PC pal? Yes, sir. In fact, there is. You had no right to tell that journalist I'm gay. I understood that was public knowledge. It isn't. I've chosen to tell some of the relief. That's all. My family are a different matter, a personal one. OK. I'm sorry, Lance. I should have come to you first. Sir. Let's just hope it all works out for the best, eh? Three people have ID'd you, Connor. And we can probably track down half the people in the club. If we need to. So go on. Well, we don't. That CCTV tape is all the proof we need. OK. I was at that club last night. Well, finally we're getting somewhere. Why'd you go there? I was after an E. What? Some of the lads and you could get some good stuff there. As long as he didn't mind going to a queer bar. And you didn't mind? Who was selling it? Geezer that runs the place. Good stuff, was it? I don't know. I never got any. Some queer started coming on to me, so I legged it. Makes me sick, all that. What did he say? Just stuff. Asking all these questions, you know? What stuff, Connor? Just stuff! What's the matter? It matters if you beat him up this morning. I never beat him up! You did, Connor. Now, we've got three witnesses that picked you out on video ID. That's three. So it'd be better for you if you just tell us the truth. Look, my mum's a copper, right? Do you think I'll be that stupid? So they? My name's Samantha. I'm a police officer. They tell me your English is very good. A lot better than my Norwegian, I'm sure. Solve, I've spoken to your dad and he's on his way here. I'm trying to find the man who did this to you. I've spoken to a few other women who we think he may have attacked. I want you to know that you can tell me anything you want. OK? Or maybe you don't want to talk at all, that's fine. But I'll be right here when you do. Thank you.
You're in luck, Lance. I just had a word with a CPS. We're charging Connor with GBH. I'm over the moon. Cheer up, sunshine. We gotta make another visit first. I've got a warrant to search your favourite discotheque. Oh. Hello. How long have you been sitting there? Only a few minutes. <laughs> Don't worry, my life's not that dull. Mine is. Oh, tell me something interesting. I've got a story you're going to love. I'm at the hospital I've with two broken ribs. I've got a to run down. What was I supposed to do? What's the matter? What, you're not happy to see us? Now, I thought you lot were into a man in a uniform. Come on, this is the sick village person. Sarge, it's all right. with respect, you're not exactly good for business. Yeah, well, we won't be long. Just want to have a quick look around. What's this about, eh? My partner's been the victim of a crime. What gives you the authority? We're community safety units, son. And we haven't had our dinner yet, so stop messing us about. Hey, what's in the box? Put it back and open it. I said open it. <laughs> Goodness. Paracetamol. Mike. I've never seen him before. And you? Dan, please. Forget it. I don't want to live with a drug dealer. Ooh. You nicked. So I said... Don't tell me. Didn't you see me coming? That's amazing. You must have psychic powers. No, you're just so predictable. Oh, really? So you can foresee my every move, can you? Yeah. I've known you a very long time, Jim Carver. Oh, is that right? So what am I going to do now? <sighs> Leave, probably. Wrong. You don't have to open it. I wanted to give you the choice. Um. This may not be very poetic and maybe it's a bit late. But I finally realised that well, it was something I'd never done properly. Will you marry me? Okay, you're free to go. Do you think I'll go to prison? Look, I'm not allowed to discuss your case with you. But if you want to talk about anything else, give me a call, okay? What sort of thing? You know, about the club or whatever. You are kidding, right? Okay, I don't have to do this, Connor. Look what it says on the sheet. That's what I do to quiz. Are you admitting the offence? Just get away from me. You don't have to give me an answer now. I never thought I wanted to hear you say those words again. But I was wrong. Yes, I will. I will marry you. Sheila. I know. He's been charged. Phil Hunter told me. I'm sorry. Don't be. Phil talked me through it. I guess I'll just have to accept it. Maybe in time I will, but I will never understand. I think he's going through something very difficult. Confusing. The drugs thing, you mean? You tried to talk to your kids about these things, but they just... I don't mean drugs. What then? Look, think about it. He's attacking innocent people. 
gay men. What does that say? What? You think my son's gay? Is that it? Look, Sheila, it's not an easy thing. If I can help in any way. You haven't got a clue, have you? You can't judge people at all. Look, Sheila, if he is, he needs support, not denial. Don't you think I'd know? You are wrong, Lance. My son is not gay. Instant room? Ah, uh, yeah, she's right here. Kerry, it's the MOD police about the suspect names at Strathnordham. Thanks. Lisa Young? Yeah, from 1989. Yep, coming through now. Great, thanks a lot. How is she? Completely traumatised. Was it him? Attack from behind, used a knife, used his left hand, used the same phrase, time to strike the hood, same accent. Anything new? Yeah. It happened in broad daylight. And it's the first midweek incident. He's been careless. Maybe he's left something for forensics. And he was more violent. A lot more violent. He almost cut her throat. Next time he will kill. Next time on The Bill. When I think about what his next move might be, it scares me. You wouldn't say yes to that? Yeah, I think the important thing is whether or not she says yes. Whatever it was that Gabriel said to you, you need to remember that this is the right thing to do. Yeah.